This screencast is on supply. In this screencast, we're going to define supply and understand why the supply curve looks like it does. We'll also define the law of supply and understand what causes a change in quantity supplied. Supply is the willingness and ability to produce at a given price. So when we talk about supply here, we will always, for the market of it, we will always have on the vertical axis the price, and along the horizontal axis we have the quantity. In this case here, we're dealing with the market for shoes. Um, I have it labeled over here, price of shoes, but because I've given a title, um, I actually could um, simplify that, and I could change that to price. Um, again, because I've got my title, I don't need to write quantity of shoes because we already know what our market is for. And so I can label this just a Q. It's really important to have a title. A graph is not a graph unless it's properly labeled. And so when you are making your graphs, always take the time to make sure you include the title. The supply curve is upward sloping. Uh, you're labeling it with an S. You could spell out supply, but um, really I think the most efficient thing to do here is just to put an S. And so what we're looking at is at a given price, what's the willingness and ability to produce or supply the product? So if we have a price here of P4, we draw a line over, we see where it hits the supply curve, and that gives us the quantity supplied at a price of P4. Now if I include um, the P3, and I draw a line over, and I see where it hits the supply curve, I'll see that as the price went down, the quantity supplied went down. And as I continue with P2, again, drawing a line where it hits the supply curve, the quantity supplied at P2 is Q2. And finally, we've added in a P1 here, and that gives us the quantity supplied at P1. Um, so we have a Q1 that is down here. As the price went down, the quantity supplied went down uh, for the market for shoes. The reasons why the supply curve looks like it does, the reasons why it is um, upward sloping. The first reason is because there's that incentive to produce more because you're going to receive more profit when the price is higher. And so that will entice producers to supply more of their product. The other reason is because you have increasing marginal costs. You especially learn this in micro, but this is about how as it, you are increasing your quantity or producing more, um, the additional costs of hiring the labor and the capital and other resources causes the prices or costs to go up. And so you need to compensate for that. When we look here at the relationship of price and quantity, that is giving us the law of supply. So there is a positive, or another way of saying it is a direct relationship, between price and quantity supplied. As we saw, when the price goes down, the quantity supplied goes down. Uh, conversely, when the price goes up, the quantity supplied is going up. That is the direct relationship that you see that causes the upward sloping of the supply curve. What's really important to remember here is that when we talk about the quantity supplied, again, the quantity supplied is how much, uh, in this case, shoes are supplied because of the prices. Quantity supplied, this is so important, quantity supplied is dependent or determined by price. Therefore, a change in quantity supplied, which is just this movement along the supply curve, is not the same thing as a change in supply. A change in supply is an actual cre new creation of the supply curve. And we will learn that um, in the future from a different screencast about the determinants that will cause the supply curve to shift. So the change in quantity supplied is dependent upon a change in price, and that causes a movement along the supply curve. As you move from P4, you move down the supply curve to um, P3 as, as you're lowering your price. 
The next thing here is to remember that this is the graphical representation of the relationship between price and quantity supplied, but you also have it here in a table, and this is the supply schedule. And in this case here, what you're seeing is that positive relationship as price is going up, the quantity supplied of shoes is also going up. Um, as indicated in a previous screencast when it talked about the demand curve, it's really important when you're creating this graph that you have equal increments along your axes. So for my horizontal or quantity axis, I have done it in increments of 10. And even though at a price of 40, you have a quantity of 33, I am still drawing that line there, but I need to um, show that in relation to the 30 um, in the 40. I can't write 10, 20, 33, and 40. The same is true over here when I'm talking about the price. These are all in equal increments, and in this case here, it's again in 10. Just because I've chosen 10 for quantity in my increments, that does not mean that I have to do increments of 10 for the price. I can choose whatever I want um, for it. It just has to be in equal increments.